Greetings and welcome to our second walkthrough video on how we go about acquiring the second key for this Mr. Robot Capture the Flag exercise. We're going to continue on with our discovery by looking at some more of the different pages that are available up on the Mr. Robot site. You'll recall from our NICTO vulnerability scan that we found a number of different web pages up on the WordPress site for Mr. Robot. We're now going to examine these different web pages to see if they offer us anything of usefulness. So I'm going to bring up my browser here. And for brevity's sake, I've gone ahead and loaded up all the different pages. And we're going to start off with the home page, which we already know about. Now, I know that we talked about viewing the source. And this is something that's often overlooked by even professionals. But you can right-click on the page and you can view the page source and this gives you the code and oftentimes developers will leave little hints of something up inside of the page code but in this case we're we're not getting any help so we can go ahead and close that one out now over here is the index.html and all this does is just keep trying to reload so we can close that out that's no use to us either and then we have the PHP. Now this was the index.php page and all this does is redirect you back to the main page. So that's not going to be much help to us either. You can go ahead and close that one out. Now normally the license.txt file would give you some information about the version number of WordPress and some other things. But we're not getting anything from this. So we can go ahead and close that one out. That brings us up to the wp-login.php page. Now we can sit here using the fsociety.dictionary file that we created. And we can start typing in usernames that we find in the list of words. But it's going to take us a long time. That's what we call the long way home. And what we're going to do is use some of the tools that we have available to us up inside of Tally. And we're going to go ahead and figure out what the username is because once we get the username we can then find out what the password is so that burp can actually intercept what we're doing over here on this wordpress login page we've got to set up a proxy that directs all of the input back over to the burp suite and the way we do this we go on over here to the menu and we click on preferences under preferences we click on the advanced option and then we're going to click on network and then we're going to click on settings. Underneath settings, we're going to select the radio button for manual proxy configuration. And where it says HTTP proxy, we're going to type in the loopback address, which is 127.0.0.1. And we're going to be using port 8080. Go ahead and say OK to that. Now, go ahead and leave everything open as it is and just minimize your browser. Now you can open up the burp suite. And in just a moment, this is going to start up, and we're going to see how we go about using it. So we're not going to update. We can close that out. This is going to be a temporary project. Say Next. And we're going to use the burp defaults. We're going to start burp. Burp is going to start up in just a moment. Now, once burp starts up, we're going to select the proxy tab. Underneath the proxy tab, we want to make sure the intercept is on. We're now going to bring up our browser one more time. And this time we're going to go back on over to this word page logon. And we're just going to type in any username. And we're going to type in any password. And we're going to say login. Now, this should have all been captured by the burp suite. So we're going to minimize this. We're going to check it out. And here it is right here. So we see that we have all the information we need for the logon field now or I should say the fields that were present on the logon page so the user is being referenced as log and the password is being referenced as ampersign WP so we're now able to tell Hydra which is going to be our next tool what fields to fill in with the brute force that is going to use using the F society dictionary file that we created and using the word list that we created it should be able to figure out a username now that we have the information we need for Hydra we can go back over to our browser and we can remove that proxy so I'm going to go back on over to the menu I'm going to open up preferences 
I'm going to go to the advanced option, network, settings, and I'm going to go back up and select the radio button that says no proxy. I'm going to say OK to that. And now we can minimize this one more time. We need to be working with Hydra inside of our Mr. Robot folder because this is where the F Society or the new F Society dot dictionary file is actually located. So Hydra is going to be looking inside of this Mr. Robot folder. And if it's not there, then it's just going to error out. So let's go ahead and see how we format this command for Hydra to be able to use it to brute force the username for the WP logon site using the new fsociety.dictionary file. So now that I have the information about the form fields that I need to input into this Hydra command, I can close out the burp suite. I've opened up a terminal and now I have configured this long command syntax to use Hydra to figure out what the username is for the logon for that WordPress site. So I've typed in Hydra space dash L, which is list, and I'm telling it to use the new fsociety.dictionary file. And I give it a space dash P, which is for the password. Now we can type in anything for the password because we don't care. So in this case, we're just using who cares. Give it a space, give it the IP address of the page, and then we come on down and we say that look inside of the HTTP dash form post and we're telling them to look for certain things such as the log field which is the user and the password which is represented as appersign dot pwd that equals password now it needs to know this because that's the code that's inside the page and we don't see that we say we see username and we see password but the code that is used to represent this to the machine is something different. That's why Hydra has to know it. We're going to go ahead and just hit enter here. Now this is going to take a while. Now imagine how long it would take if we used the 860,000 word dictionary file that we were given originally. We knocked that down to 11,000 words and that's going to take still about five or ten minutes. So be patient with this. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and it's going to start working. Make sure you're running this Hydra program inside of the Mr. Robot directory so that it knows where to find this new fsociety.dictionary file. Again, we're not interested in finding the password. We're only interested in finding a legitimate user account that will allow us to find the password using another utility. Hydra has given me a username by the name of Elliot. So Elliot is going to be the username we're going to use to get us to the next step here. So we're going to use Elliot with the WP scan utility to figure out what the password is for this particular account. We're still inside the Mr. Robot directory and this is where we need to be because this is where the word list that WP scan needs to see if it can find a password for the Elliot account. So we've typed in WP scan space dash dash URL and that's the URL of our target space dash dash word list and that word list is located at forward slash root forward slash desktop up inside the Mr. Robot directory and the file name is new F society dot dick or dictionary space dash dash and the username is Elliot. Now we're telling this WP scan that hey we have a username but see if you can brute force and find us the password for this particular user so we're going to go ahead and hit enter and in just a moment it should come back and give us some information after about four minutes the WP scan comes back and it gives us the password for the username Elliot turns out that Elliot is the main character for the Mr. Robot TV show and his password turns out to be his badge number, ER28-0652. Let's go ahead and minimize our terminal, and let's bring up our browser, and let's get onto that logon page. All right, so we're going to type in Elliot and his password. I'm going to go ahead and hit Enter, and that gets us to the main dashboard of the WordPress site. We start with the plugins, and we start going down and we start investigating the plugins to see 
which ones might be vulnerable. In this case, we didn't have any luck. None of these are actually vulnerable. And the ones that were vulnerable have been updated to a newer version, making them more secure. So whatever vulnerability did exist in the past is no longer valid. Since we have gained access to this WordPress site and we have access to the plugins, what comes to mind is uploading a PHP package or plugin that's going to give us a reverse shell. Now this is pretty easy to do, but you've got to follow the steps exactly as they're shown to you here. First thing you want to do is go on out to the internet and you want to go to Pest Pentest Monkey. And here we can get a PHP dash reverse shell. You're going to download this package and save it to your Mr. Robot folder. Okay, we get that done and then we're going to do some extraction and we're going to do a couple of other things to get this package ready to upload as a plugin to this WordPress site. So go ahead and download. We're going to start the download here in just a second. And we're going to go ahead and do a save the file. This is going to save it to the default download folder. Once this is downloaded, we can go ahead and open up the folder where it is contained. And now we see that it's here and we can go ahead and move it. So I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to say move to. And I want to move it on over to my desktop to the Mr. Robot. And I'm going to go ahead and just select and move it on in there. Close this out. Minimize my browser. And let's go on over to Mr. Robot. So once we have the file moved on over to our Mr. Robot folder, we can go ahead and right click on the download. We can say extract here. That creates another folder. And inside that folder we have another folder. And inside here we have the PHP reverse shell.php file that we need to, to edit. Now to edit this, I'm just going to right click and I'm going to say open with other applications. So I'm going to select LeapPad because I like using it. Now this is what you're going to have to input into this file for this to work. This is part of it. There's actually two areas that we have to modify. This is the first part. We have to add the WordPress header information. So you can go out, I'll take you to the site, and this information is also available inside of the lab file. But you can also go out to the internet and you can go over here to this basedpin.com and you can get the information for that header. But I, as I said, the URL and the actual information is posted inside of the lab file. All right, so we can minimize this. We come back on over here to our file, and once we've actually done this, where we've gone in and we've added the header information, we have one more thing to edit. And we have to go down here, and we have to change this IP address to the IP address of your Kali machine, because it is the listener. So this is the listener that you're going to have to change or configure for this reverse shell to work. We're telling the reverse shell that, hey, listen, when this launches, you're going to go back on over and you're going to find this address here, this machine, and you're going to be looking for port 4444, and you're going to create the shell that we so badly need. So we've got all that information inside here, so we're going to go ahead and close that out. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to create an archive, a zip archive. So we right click on the file. Let's do that again. We right click on the file and we just select compress. And from here we select a zip as our archive type and we say create. And there's our archive. So now we're ready to go with that. But before we upload this to the WordPress site, we've got to create our listener. So we're going to bring up a terminal. And on this terminal, we're going to type in nc space dash small letter v space dash small letter n space dash small letter l space dash small letter p space and we're going to give it the port that we're listing on which is 4444 all right we can go ahead and minimize that now don't close it out just minimize it all right now we can go back on over to our wordpress site and begin uploading our reverse shell plugin so i've gone back over to my wordpress site i'm on the plugins page i'm going to click on add new that's going to take us over to the option to upload a plugin. We're going to click on that. 
And now we're going to browse on over to that zip file we created. And now we're going to select the install button. And in just a moment, we should get the option to go ahead and activate this plugin that we just uploaded. So I'm going to go ahead and say activate. And that's going to generate an error message that we can ignore. So we're going to go ahead and ignore that. And now if everything's working, we should be able to minimize this. Open up our reverse shell listener. And there is our shell. So now we have a shell access to this WordPress site and we can start looking for that second key. Now we can check to see who we're logged on as by typing in who am I and it says I'm logged on as Damien. We can also do a host name that gives us the operating system and we can do a CD home which we're going to do now and we're now inside of the home directory. Now what we can do here is we can do an ls to list the contents. And you'll see that the only folder that's inside of this home directory is another folder called Mr. Robot. So let's go ahead and change directory on over there. Go ahead and enter. Now I'm inside of that directory. Now I can do an ls. And we see that we have our second key. So what we can do now is we can go ahead and try to cat this out so that we can see the contents of this particular file. But when we try to do a cat, to see what the contents are of this particular file we get a permission denied so we have a password file and I'm guessing is that that's where we're going to get the password that we need to get into the account that's going to give us access to uh, this particular key file so I've gone ahead and I've typed in cat space password the name of the file and this is for that password that we need to get access into the key and it says that it comes back and it tells me that the password for the Mr. Robot account is this big long hash here. So we're going to copy this like so. And we're going to go out to the internet. We're going to find a MD5 decryptor that's going to give us this password. So I've gone out here to this decryptor site. This is called MD5online.org. I'm going to right click and I'm going to paste that big long hash in here. And we're going to tell it to go ahead and decrypt and see how long it takes. shouldn't take too long. And in just a moment, it comes back with this alphabet. That is the password. It is the entire alphabet. That's the password that we need. So we need to go ahead and copy that because that's just too much to be typing in every time we need to use it. So now that we have the password, and it looks like it's for our username, Robot, we can go ahead and try to switch on over to this user. And it said it must be run from the terminal. So now we got another problem. So now we're going to have to create a terminal session. So let's see how we go about doing that. We can use the following Python script to go ahead and create a terminal. So I'm, I've already typed it into the prompt, but it is also available up inside of the lab file. You can just copy and paste this if you so desire. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And now we, we've created that wonderful terminal that we need. So I'm going to go ahead and type in that su robot and try to get over to that user account. And then it wants that long password that we decrypted. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and paste it in here. Hit enter. And now we're at the root account. And we now have terminal access. Very cool. So we're now ready to go ahead and cat or bring to the terminal the contents of that text file for the second key. So now we're going to go ahead and hit enter. And now we get the contents. That's our second key. So we've got one key left to go. So I will see you in my next short video on how we go about acquiring that third and final key.